This looks like a mouse, but actually it's also a scanner. It's the PageBrush Professional Scanner for mouse systems. And what's unique about this scanner is you can scan across, come down, come back again, and it automatically stitches together the final image for you. Now, you may not need a scanner quite as powerful as this one, but with everyone doing desktop publishing, the increasing emphasis on the graphic display of information, it seems everyone these days wants to get pictures into their computers. And that, of course, means a scanner. Today, we take a look at the latest technology in scanners on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Central Point Software, supplier of utility software including disk backup, data recovery, file management, virus protection, and desktop management. Central Point Software, making computing safer, simpler, and faster. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software, and by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me this week is Heidi Roizen, president of TMaker Software. Heidi, we have here the HP ScanJet Plus Scanner. Let me show you a couple of neat things this can do. I've already scanned in that image. You can see I've highlighted my area of interest, the girl's eyes. I can ask it to rescan that zoomed-in view and just really focus in on the particular portion of the image that I want. And as we can see, it's going to show us the, uh, it's starting to scan right now. It takes just a couple of seconds to get this rescanned, zoomed view of the picture up there. And there it is. And not only can it do that, but using the scanning gallery software that comes with it, if I don't like the exposure there, I can hit auto adjust and it'll clean up that exposure for me. Uh, it's amazing to think it was only four years ago, actually, the original HP ScanJet came out, which really kind of launched the, the scanner business. Since then, the annual sales of scanners has been increasing by over 200%. Why does everybody all of a sudden want a scanner? Well, I think that the desire to scan was always there, but now the price has come down into a range that most companies can afford to bring scanners into their daily office environment. After all, the ultimate storage device has always been paper right. up until recently, but we really would like to get our data into computers. Not only now with a scanner can we bring in graphic technology, graphic imagery mm -hmm. like this, but we can also bring in character-based written documents and through OCR technology yeah. bring them into the computer mm -hmm. as well. Well, today we'll take a look at six different scanners. We'll see a hand scanner, a flatbed scanner, two color scanners, and a new scanner that uses optical character recognition to import text and graphics directly into your application software. Now, most scanners, even color scanners, can be had for under $2,000 or so. But if you are a professional graphic shop, you need the best. And that can cost more than your whole computer system. We begin with a report on the high end of the scanner market, the speed scanner from Array Technologies. Digital Impressions is a desktop service bureau that offers designers the equipment as well as expertise to create color proofs and high quality type for their products. One of the machines used at this San Jose store is the speed scanner. When we were shopping for a scanner, we were looking for uh, three things. We are looking for speed, uh, clarity, color fidelity, and uh, quality. And price wasn't as much as an issue as it was getting those three things in the mid-range market. The speed scanner from Array Technologies interfaces to a Macintosh 2 or a 386 computer. It can scan a 1,024 line color picture in less than two minutes, but it needs only seven seconds to do a black and white full image preview using software from Array. Users can adjust the focus, lens aperture and image composition and immediately see the results on the computer screen. But the secret of the scanner lies in its versatility. The speed scanner can be mounted onto a separate unit with a light box and slide holder to scan a color slide. The speed scanner can even be used as a studio camera to scan three-dimensional objects. Results are immediate. All this flexibility comes at a price. The scanner sells for nearly $30,000 for the Mac and just above $20,000 for the PC. But that's where stores like Digital Impressions come in. What we offer is the company or the designer not having to invest the money in the high-end technical equipment needed to produce their output, plus the technical expertise that's needed. 
the graphic designer doesn't have time to put all his time into worrying what's the latest bug fix. He just wants his file output and run. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Nell McCormack. Joining us now to demonstrate two different types of scanners are Serge Timoshev of Logitech and also with us Larry Lunetta of AVR. Heidi? Larry, we all uh, deal with copiers in our offices and most of us don't even understand those. Now we're going to have scanners about. Uh, maybe you could demystify this for us a little by explaining it. I see you've got some insides there. Yes. Uh, the, the basic element of a desktop scanner is the camera and it's very much like the element you find in an everyday copying machine. Uh, these mirrors collect the light from an image uh, and process that light into a lens, very much like the, the camera lens on a standard camera. Uh, the light is then transferred by a charge coupled device into analog electrical signals. Those analog electrical signals are then processed into digital information by a circuit board inside the scanner and that digital information of course can then be further processed by the computer system. And what's the difference in a black and white scan and a color scan there, Larry? Okay. Uh, a black and white scan takes the light as it comes off the image. A color scan uses a sequence of red, green, and blue filters to produce a 24-bit color image, mm -hmm. much like a television uses a red, a green, right, and a blue right. gun to excite the right phosphors for a color image. All right, Serge, let's turn to you. We have two different kinds of scanners here, this desktop uh, scanner here and a hand scanner. Show us the Logitech hand scanner and just run us through the hardware for a second. Well, the, the internal hardware is actually quite similar to a desktop scanner, except that a desktop scanner contains a motor mm -hmm. that, that, that moves the uh, lens along the image. In, in a hand scanner, your hand is the motor, and everything else is pretty, pretty much the same. Um, there are some... Uh, things with a hand scanner, you have to include some hardware functions right on the machine. So you've got, for example, a selection of uh, from 256 to 64 to 16 gray levels and then black and white for line art if, for example, you're mm -hmm. scanning text. You've got um, sort of on-the-fly uh, brightness and you've also got four selectable uh, Positions to choose different um, resolutions. From and, and I see there's a pilot light sort of on top. What is that? Right. This light uh, will illuminate as you're scanning, and it goes from green to orange to red, depending on how fast you scan. Typically, you want to keep it in the green. It tells you, it gives you visual feedback as to how quickly mm -hmm. you're scanning so that you don't go too fast and compress All right. the image. One of the problems people imagine with a hand scanner is, of course, the, the narrow width of it. And if you have a larger image, how do you get right. the whole image in? Would you show us how you would right. scan a full-size picture and then stitch those pieces together? Certainly. I should point out that, that um, some research that Logitech has done shows that over 70% of images scanned are within a hand scanner width. Uh -huh. So typically a snapshot or something like that can easily be scanned. Um, I've placed the image into a, a, a little um, scan guide that mm -hmm. allows me to hold it down, a scan pad. And I just put the scanner on the image, hit the button, and pull it down. And as you see, we're getting real-time feedback. We, yeah, we can see it in the monitor. Right. And you can see through the window on the scanner to see where you are to make sure you're scanning straight. Right. There are also some hardware conventions that prevent you from fishtailing and and that sort of thing. So I've scanned half my image here and I'm going to go ahead and stitch the uh, other half which I could have done from an existing file if I mm -hmm. wanted to put something else in there. Again I'm pulling down the scanner across the image. Now this is at 100 dpi. I, if I want a tremendous amount of detail I can go up to 400 dpi uh -huh. but because this is an 8-bit scanner you can actually have 100 dpi resolution and still get quite a good scan. All right, now show us how you put those two together. Okay, right? so now we've got this. I'll drop it down with the zoom level just so I can manage the whole image a little better. And then I just pull this down and position it where I want it. Let's say I wanted to uh, focus in on the Persian Gulf. Mm -hmm. I could actually focus in on that part which is stitched together, crop it. And then I've got that image, and then I can zoom in and, and take a right. closer look And if you had more time, it. of course, you could play around with that and zoom right. it out and be a little more careful. And you can be a little more out. precise as to how you yeah. can actually edit it down to the pixel level. Sure. 
All right, Larry, it's your turn now. Show us how the AVR desktop scanner works. All right, Stuart, we're going to take this color image and put it on the glass, much like a copier, and energize the scanner to scan the image into the system. This is 300 dots per inch, uh -huh. 256 levels of gray. Made in the USA, the only one on the market uh, to be made in the United mm -hmm. States. It emulates the HP scanner on the DOS side, the Apple scanner on the Mac side. It's got a frog design so the one scanner will work with either a PC or Mac system. PC or mm -hmm. Mac. Mm -hmm. And it's a frog design package, which is terrific on the desktop. All right, so we, so we have a scanned image. We up. now have our scanned image. And let's go up and uh, uh, do some adjustments to brightness and contrast. Uh, the designer's eye may say, gee, I like a, a little lighter. Mm -hmm. or a little darker, and you can just move the slider, and much like your television, change the brightness and contrast, and either take those changes or not. Uh, one of the very nice features in this package is that you can uh, zoom in on a particular area and do it multiple times and get down to the individual pixel level, which shows up as rectangles as you finally yeah. get down into the middle of the image. Uh, this package has the ability to add type to the image, uh, say I'm a botanist and I want to uh, uh, add uh, flower to the image and uh, click on OK and when we get back up into the image uh, you can see right, the type right, right there. Right. Uh, we want to take a look at uh, the, the file types that are supported by this package, and you can see it's encapsulated PostScript, mm -hmm. PICT, TGA, and TIFF. Now, Larry, while this is a, a black and white scanner, it's upgradable to color? Exactly. It's the only scanner on the market where a field upgrade can be done that will convert this to a full 24-bit color scanner uh, because, as everyone knows, it's a color world. Oh, there you go. And right. we've taken okay. our color scanner and uh, used the upgrade uh, and we now have a full 24-bit. Okay. Serge, what's the price difference here between your Logitech hand scanner there and this desktop scanner? The ScanMan sells for $499, uh -huh. and it includes the Windows image editing software. Um, it is 256 levels of gray and right. comes with a right. lifetime warranty. And, and the AVR, Larry? Uh, 1990 retail with the interface kit and Photoshop LE on the Mac, which is an 895 retail value. All right, real quick, let's look at some hard copy output. You have an example of that finely stitched globe which you had scanned before, and we can see it's pretty right. clean. This was output to a Linotronic yeah. typesetter. And Larry, what do you have? Yeah, also output to a Linotronic, and the, the importance of precision is, you can see here, this is a very dense, very beautiful printing process, and if you're going to spend eleven or twelve dollars to have one image done, you certainly want a good scan. All right, Serge, we have just a couple seconds left. This has nothing to do with the show, but I see you have a radio mouse from Logitech there, and I just want to take a look at that and tell me what that is. Hold it up so we can see there's no wires. Huh? Well, it's called Mouse Man Cordless Radio Mouse. Yeah. Uh, it's our new line of mice. They're sculpted uh, for the right and left hand, uh, large and small hands, and this one is the only mouse on the market that is linked by radio to a receiver, so it's not, not infrared. Right, yeah, it's not so limited to line, line of problems, sight. Yeah. The receiver's under the table here. That's great. Thank you very much. All right, while it's nice to have a scanner that can import images into your desktop publishing documents, it's also nice to be able to scan in text and instantly convert it into ASCII files that can be manipulated then by your application software. We have a report on one such product, the unique handheld scanner called the Typist. Typing and copy for an ad layout is a time-consuming job, so designers often simulate the type layout of their final pieces by greeking or writing meaningless words in their drafts. But here at Cleary, Kwame and Souter near San Francisco, designers use a handheld scanner, appropriately called the typist, to enter real words into their drafts. The typist from Care Corporation can scan over 500 words per minute at a two inch per second scanning speed. It's almost as if you were typing it yourself. So if you're in a word processor uh, or you're in, uh, let's say, a page layout program, the words are, as you scan them, are going directly into, uh, in, into the application. And they're going in, uh, let's say, into the word processor in the format that you've already set up. So if you have a certain font, let's say you've chosen uh, a Garamond font or a Helvetica font, uh, the words will enter into the application, actually into the software, into the application, the way uh, that you've set up uh, the application yourself, the format that you've chosen yourself. The typist can scan a five-inch swath of text either horizontally or vertically and stitch the repeated words together. 
If you're working with the spreadsheet program, the scanner will even input all the figures into the proper cells on the screen. For designers at Cleary, Kwame & Souter, entering actual text lets them conceptualize the finished ad early in the design phase. Here at Cleary, Kwame & Souter, it enables us to approximate the reality of the ad you know, much sooner. Uh, for example, we, we have what we affectionately have dubbed uh, WYSIWYG uh, advertising and, uh, and brochure development. What you see is what you get. When we go into a client, uh, our advertising comps and our um, brochure comps uh, tend to be much closer, uh, sort of a much closer approximation of the finished product. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Nell McCormack. While scanning black and white images is nice, scanning color images is even nicer. Here to show us two of the newest color scanners are Michael Rubin of Epson America and Jeff Bailey, president of Arrow Systems. Heidi? Jeff, we've just taken a look at black and white technology and it seems to be very nice. I can tell just by looking at these that they've got to cost a lot more. They're an awful lot bigger to start with. Uh, can you tell us a little bit who's buying these sorts of scanners and what are they using them for? Well, the primary market, Heidi, for th this level of scanner is the color prepress market, where high quality, uh, full color is required. And also, uh, we sell the system as part of a photo retouching system, which is used by commercial photographers. All right, Jeff Heidi said she thinks this looks kind of expensive. Well, what is the price of something like the Sharp scanner? Here? The Sharp scanner is fourteen thousand nine ninety, including the transparency adapter. All right, Michael, and how is the Epson color scanner positioned? The Epson color scanner's position is both a color and a grayscale scanner. It comes in right around $2,500, mm -hmm. and uh, that also includes image editing software. All right, show us how it works now. Scan something for us and show us the software sure. that does come with it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do your basic color scan, and this would be a good scan to import into a presentation or to do some real simple color desktop publishing. Mm -hmm. Um, I've saved a template which will tell it exactly where to scan, exactly how to scan, which will save some time for us. Now as it's scanning, um, it uses our proprietary TruePass scanning system, which it's a combination of a red, a green, and a blue color-filled light bar, which alternate as it scans down. So it's really just one pass, not three separate Correct. passes. Correct. It allows it to do it in one pass, and that also enhances your grayscale work, uh -huh. because they all illuminate at the same time, you eliminate any dropout effects that you would have. What's happening now is because it's scanning in 16 million colors and we can only see 256 because of the display system, mm -hmm. um, it's optimizing the palette. And you'll see when that wipes down, there's 256 colors and that's our picture. One of the other nice features that this software has is it has an automated mode to balance the colors. And we'll pull up our meter here and we select our meter. And what we do is we select a white area or an area in the picture that's supposed to be white. We click on it and we tell, it to, we tell it to go ahead and run through the optimization and set everything according to that white balance, which is a really nice feature. It sort of automated, automates mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. Now the next thing we're going to do is once we have this, this image the way we want it, we would go ahead in and we would save it in a file format to bring it into another program. And what we're going to do here is we're going to bring it into another program that comes bundled with the Epson scanner, and that's Picture Publisher Plus. Uh, Picture Publisher Plus allows you to edit and manipulate grayscale and color photographs. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to open up that image that we just scanned mm -hmm. in. And while that's opening up, it, it may take a couple minutes. I'll go ahead and talk about what's included with the scanner. The scanner mm -hmm. works on both Macintosh and PC systems. And the scanner itself is $19.99. Um, the DOS interface kit is $4.95 which gives you the two software programs we were just looking at, Picture Publisher Plus and Color Lab, and also another program, Image In, which allows you to do black and white editing. All right, so let's get back to the, uh, the image here. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to do some sophisticated retouching, not unlike your printer would do if you were combining prints uh, at the print shop. What we want to do first is we can sharpen this image. Now, what we can do is we can select, select a masked off area and you'll see it blows it up so you can select a, a finer area. And we want to go ahead and paint off the area that we want to sharpen. So you're selecting that head. Right, I'm masking off the head. And, and if when this you say was, sharpen, what do you mean there, Michael? Well, it's really sharpening the focus. Hmm. Uh, for instance, if we had a snapshot that, that wasn't particularly in crisp focus, 
we could select the area that we want it to sharpen and then go ahead and press that down. You'll see as it wipes through, it significantly increases the focus yeah, on that portion yeah. of the picture. Now, of course, the nice feature about using a computer is everything you do is automatically undoable. And we just go over here, point, and give it the thumbs down. And if you look at the head, you'll see it wipes through and it goes yeah, back yeah. out of focus a little bit. All right, what else can you do with this? The other thing we can do is we can add some artistic touches here. We might want to frame off this picture a little better, and to do that, we can clone. What we're going to do is we're going to clone this top branch down here towards the bottom. And what that allows us to do is add in another branch, and that will frame off our subject, which happens to be the mountain lion. So you're really cloning that tree branch quality and color and so on. Correct. I'm actually cloning every part of the image where the brush on the top is, I is see. moving so towards the brush on the copying bottom. That, copying that piece of image down. Exactly. Okay. And when you do it in painting format, it, it allows you to be a lot more accurate with right. what you're doing. So you didn't have to draw that. You're just literally cloning that piece of, piece of the image. Correct. Yeah. And that, that really simplifies the whole process. And if we wanted to be exact, we can shrink down our paintbrush and just yeah. clone off the parts that we want. All right, Jeff, let's turn to your big sharp scanner here. And, and what extra functionality do you get here? What, what's special about this, especially at the high price point? Well, I think primarily the high resolution, the 600 DPI, is, 600 is DPI the most important this, feature. Yeah. Right now, I'll be scanning a transparency. And you notice that uh, it, that's the type of uh, object we normally yeah. scan during professional okay, work. OK, let's do it. OK, the, uh, the first thing I would do is I'm, I'm operating in Color Studio right now. Mm -hmm. So I would go to the scanner dialog box which will show me the outline of the 11 by 17 scanner bed. Mm -hmm. uh, I can position a, a window to scan any portion of the area I want. Over here, I'm able to adjust the DPI mm -hmm. of the scanner from a low level all the way up to 600 DPI. And I can also adjust the individual color components and the overall focus. Also, we can select different levels of unsharp mm -hmm. masking mm -hmm. to uh, enhance the image during the scan. Uh, let me try, let me begin a scan right now and we'll see some of the characteristics. Uh, as with the Epson, this scanner is also a single pass scanner. The first thing it does is position itself over a white bar where all 6600 CCD elements are sampled and adjusted for the light from the uh, mm -hmm. unit on the top. You notice the so pretty it's colors. It's setting itself uh, up here, yeah. It's sampling three colors in each pass. Okay. So at that point, after it finishes doing the white bar sampling, it'll move over and actually begin scanning the image. Right, okay. And the time it takes will depend on the resolution of the scan. Yeah, now and for time purposes, you've already got that image right. up here, right? Yeah, so here's the image mm -hmm. that, that we just got through scanning. Let me zoom in on that a little bit so I can uh, show you a larger view of the image. Mm -hmm. In Color Studio, we have the capability of doing extensive photo retouching and compositing, etc. At this Right now, I'll show you just what would be the natural normal step of adjusting the color. We have the color palette here. Down below, we can adjust the various components of the color. For example, I can adjust right now the gamma, which is the nonlinearity of the image. And yeah. you can see it go from light to dark. You can also adjust each individual color component, and uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, right. and so on. Uh, that would be the normal type of operation we do when we color adjust the image to reach a final image. Jeff, I want to get to the output. We only have a little bit of time left. Okay. Show me some examples of actually what you would do with this stuff. This is the same image that we have right here. And what we've done is we've dropped it into a page in Quark Express, put type, uh, Pantone colors, mm -hmm. graphics on the image. Okay. Another example is a piece that we designed on the system, which shows a padlock and the keypad from a telephone right. composited together. This is a kind of interesting image. Excuse the seam in the center, but it's yeah. a brochure for a condominium. When we received this, it's a brand new condominium, and there were no flowers. So what we did is we took two images, one of the condominium, uh -huh. one of flowers, and we grew flowers instantly. Seeing is not believing with scanner software right. anymore. Thanks very much, gentlemen. That's our look at scanners. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, 11 hardware manufacturers have agreed to use a common logo on their computers to indicate the PCs meet a minimum standard for multimedia applications. The new MPC logo will mean the computer system includes at least a 286 microprocessor, 
two megabytes of memory, a 30 megabyte hard drive, a CD-ROM drive, and a VGA card. Manufacturers intending to use this new MPC logo include heavyweights like AT&T, Tandy, and Zenith. Smith Corona has joined forces with the Acer Group in introducing a new line of IBM PC compatibles called Simply Smart PCs. The new PC line features six 286 machines and one 386SX model. All seven computers will be preloaded and pre-configured with software, so-called plug-and-go systems, similar to the IBM PS1. Tandy has introduced the lowest price CD-ROM drive on the market. The new CDR1000 is an internal drive for IBM compatibles with a retail price of under $400. In addition to being the lowest price CD-ROM drive, the Tandy CD-ROM also features a sliding disk tray just like audio CD players. Taking a look at this week's top 10 software titles for the Macintosh, Mac Connection reports that Mac Utilities is in the number one position with Mac and Tax 1990 in second. Third is After Dark, followed by Sam and Disk Doubler. Rounding out the top ten are Adobe Type Manager, Correct Grammar, Suitcase 2, Vet from Spectrum Holobyte, and Microsoft's Word. Time now for this week's software review. Here's Paul Schindler. Help! Sorry, I was just dialing 911. Of course, chances are the 911 people can't help me or you with computer problems. Well, this week we're going to take a step away from the ordinary and look at an expensive but critical piece of software called Lysis. This isn't a database, it's an answer base. And who needs it? Well, anyone who runs a helpline, whether they're helping internal computer users or external customers. This software helps you track incoming problems and find answers for anxious callers. You start by recording information about the caller. If they've called before, you can just bring it up. If the user is on a service contract, you can see how much time they have left. There are different answer bases for different versions of software, so Lysis guides you and the customer to the right one using action words. Reports allow you to see how you're doing in answering hotline questions. Lysis is $3,000 from Lysis Indicator, Georgia. If you or your customers need the help, it's worth it. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. GeoWorks Ensemble was the top award winner with four prizes at the Software Publishers Association's annual Excellence in Software Awards. Ensemble received awards for Best Personal Productivity Program, Best Consumer Program, Best New Use of a Computer, as well as a Critics' Choice Award for Best Consumer Program. Well, finally, Time Magazine is getting into the electronic publishing business. Time is set to release its first multimedia magazine on a CD-ROM. All of Time's stories and pictures on the Persian Gulf War will be compiled onto one CD-ROM disc. The initial release of the Time Gulf War disc will be for the Macintosh. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Maria Gabriel. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by Central Point Software, makers of Central Point Antivirus, a comprehensive program for the detection, removal, and prevention of more than 400 computer viruses. Additional funding has been provided by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software, and by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange.